Hey everybody, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I uh, wanted to bring you a quick, short little video, or relatively short, compared to some of my other videos. Uh, today I want to talk to you about needles. <clears throat> I get lots of questions from people, particularly new sewers, but sometimes even seasoned sewers, on what kind of needles they should get for their sewing machines. Uh, some of you who are new to vintage sewing machines, uh, you may ask, and you are correct to ask the question, hey, can I use modern needles in my sewing machine? Do I need something special or specific? And the answer to that is mostly, yes, you can use new sewing machine needles that you would get in a sewing shop, or you can get them online. I get a lot of mine online. Now, uh, I wanted to mention just a few things uh, today. We'll talk about, a little bit about needle types, needle brands, when these things matter and when they don't. And of course, needle, uh, needle size. So uh, most of you, or many of you, will use something referred to as a universal needle. And you will also see numbers on the packages of these needles. I'm gonna sh show you this one. This is the Schmetz brand. Not the only brand that you, you know, have to use this brand. I have some. Uh, it's fairly commonly found in many sewing stores, depends on where you live. But notice it says universal. This is considered a, uh, uh, a sharp sewing machine needle tip. And of course they come in different sizes. Now this package has size 14. That's a common size for a lot of your uh, maybe light to medium weight fabrics. Um, some of you have your own ideas and, and preferences for size. Notice that this says, I'll see if it'll pick up here, because the needles, uh, this is printed on clear plastic, but this says 15 by 1 H, like hat. It also says 130 slash 705 H. These standards for sewing machines use these, sometimes there are codes that mean the same thing. And these are sort of specifications for needles, if you will. Now, this is one example of a needle type. A lot of woven fabrics use these needles. And when you're doing uh, sewing with light to medium weight fabrics, that's really all you need. You don't necessarily have to have a different needle tip type. And when we talk about needle types, we're talking sometimes about the shaft of the needle, the main body of it, uh, and then we're also talking about the very tip of the needle, the part that, that first meets your sewing material. Uh, another example of this would be, let's find this one here. This is Organ Brand. It's my favorite brand for a number of reasons. Uh, most Organ Brand needles are made in Japan. Uh, the quality is incredible. And they have two versions. They have uh, a standard uh, chrome or stainless type of needle. They may be nickel plated. I can't, I can't vouch for that. But they look, uh, they look like chrome um, needles, and they are excellent quality. This here is also 15 by 1, size 14. Notice it says HA-X1. Uh, uh, now, this is a size 14, and I'll take a look inside here. I'm trying to remember which ones these are, if this is or is not a <coughs> chrome. And actually, no. This is, uh, it's a universal needle, just like the Schmetz that I showed you. But this particular one is part of a line that the organ company offers. Now, when you look at it, you'll notice that the, uh, the body or the shaft of the needle all the way to the tip is sort of a gold color. And even though it looks like gold, it's actually a titanium coating. And what they do is they take their needles and they coat them in titanium and according to Oregon, they last longer. They don't wear out as quickly. And it has been my own experience that that's generally the case. That's generally true. They cost a little bit more, but we're talking a small percentage here. It's not like a dramatic markup or anything. So if you get the opportunity to try these out, let me know what you think of them. I think they make a difference. And uh, you know, do you really wanna pinch pennies with the quality of something so important as a needle? Now, all needles have a lifespan. They have to be replaced. I have noticed that I can sew for longer with the same needle and not have to change it out. 
uh, as quickly as I do others. There's nothing wrong with the other needles. If you don't sew with titanium needles, there's nothing wrong. Those needles are perfectly fine. Uh, but try these uh, if you haven't before and see what you think. Um, Oregon offers this titanium needle specification in universal needles and some of their other needle tip types, but not all of them. So if I want a, um, uh, a jeans needle or I want a uh, leather tip, I may or may not find it in the titanium coating, but they certainly offer them in their, uh, in their standard metal, which is, which is also uh, really good quality. Now, let's see, this might actually be an example of what I was just speaking of. By the way, this is the, uh, the Oregon package. This is a new one that I bought. I haven't opened it yet. This is size 18, so it's a larger size needle. And you will open this little package up. It's like a little foil pack. Um, and here we go. Now, notice that these, I'm gonna hold them here so I don't drop them. These are Oregon needles, but notice that they are not titanium coated. They are also uh, listed differently under their description. Let's say you want to use uh, a, not a universal needle. Let's say you have a heavy fabric such as denim or canvas. Um, it doesn't have to be those, but those are the common heavy fabrics in your wovens. You're going to want something called a jeans needle. Now it's a little misleading because you see, the, here's the Schmetz brand and it says jeans needle on it. You don't have to be sewing jeans in order to use this. They call them jeans needles, but what they really are, um, they're simply je uh, needles that have a heavier weight shaft. In other words, the body of the needle is uh, stronger and it typically is a little thicker, but it does fit your machine. It doesn't change the way the needle fits the machine, but let's just say it's a little, uh, it's a beefier needle and it's designed to take, uh, you know, a little bit rougher sewing because it's having to go through heavier fabrics. Uh, it's just having to work a little harder. So think of this as a heavy fabric needle, even though it says jeans, maybe you have a canvas uh, or a heavy fabric, doesn't have to be canvas. And let's say you're sewing a slip cover or, or it could be drapery. You may find that a jeans needle is useful for you. And again, they come in different sizes. This is a size 18. I have noticed that whenever I am sewing heavy fabric, I will sometimes or very often use slightly heavier thread and the needle sizes typically are anywhere from 16 to 18. You can get size 20 needles in some brands. That's a rarity that you would use. Only, only certain vintage sewing machines like the Singer 15 class will even take a size 21 needle. I believe the Singer 66 will as well. But your call, your, the call for that uh, needle and the use of it is, 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 not, is not common, but it's there if you need it. Anyway, so it says jeans needle, and it's even got a little picture of blue jeans here. But just, like I say, don't feel like you're limited to blue jeans. Now, that big giant pack of needles I just took out, the ones that were in the organ that are non-titanium, on the back, they don't say jeans, but they are. They are HLX5. And this, this threw me off initially because the organ company doesn't call them jeans, but the HLX5, whether it's size 18 or a different size, of course your, your needle eye size uh, is right here. Um, you, these are actually the organ company's version of a jeans needle, but they're just simply HLX5, but they're heavy, heavier weight needles the system and the installation of the needles is the same, whatever your machine specifies in terms of how to install the needle. Excuse me, but keep in mind that if you're looking for a heavy jeans needle, that type in Oregon, it may not say jeans on it. I kind of wish they did so that there was some sort of, some way for all of us to kind of know uh, the difference. Here's another needle type, and I really strongly recommend that if you sew any kind of leather uh, for a vintage home sewing machine, which is uh, garment leather. Many of you have seen me demonstrate in my other videos sewing leather uh, samples on a vintage sewing machine, but again, we're talking about garment weight leather. It's a lightweight leather. You can wiggle it in your hand. 
you, you cannot sew uh, vegetable tanned, very dense leather. Uh, you may see people doing that in YouTube videos. I really would not do that if I were you. You can end up harming what is otherwise an heirloom, heavy-duty piece of machinery uh, that the vintage home sewing machines are. But you can only uh, ask so much of them. They do, vintage sewing machines will, will run circles around any new machine when it comes to heavy material and garment leather, but there are limits to everything. But anyway, this will help you when you are sewing leather because it has a special tip that is designed to puncture leather. Some people will use these even for vinyls, but those materials, le uh, vinyl and leather particularly, have a different texture and density than do, say, woven fabrics. So keep that in mind. And again, this is the Schmetz brand. Other brands of needle have these. You don't have to have Schmetz. You may go into a sh sewing shop and they may have a different brand altogether. So keep that in mind. But again, if you don't switch out your uh, needle for leather sewing, you're going to find that your machine is going to really have to work a lot harder and unnecessarily so. Uh, and these were $3.99 and uh, $4, so not overly expensive. Now, <clears throat> this is, where's the little cover go? This is, these are older needles that, like I say, I get all sorts of things in the sewing machine uh, uh, equipment, uh, sewing notions that come with the machines I buy. This is from an older Bernina. It says 130-705H. It is a home sewing machine needle. Again, you may see, see needles say 15 by one. But I'm using this, uh, I'm gonna show this to you because I've described to you in my video about troubleshooting that needles, uh, at least after the early 1900s, <clears throat> have the same shape and, in, and, and they have the same uh, specifications and size standards as they have since the early 1900s. And that's a really great thing. If you have a 1920 sewing machine, or you have a 1959 sewing machine, or even a brand new sewing machine, they all should take home sewing machine needles, 15 by one, 130-705. Uh, and you may even see other number designations. But look closely here, I'm gonna to try to hold this in the light. The needle on your left is showing the flat side. Uh, it may or may not be obvious, but I'm gonna try. Uh, we're in the later part of the afternoon here and that might help. Notice the needle on the right is rounded and it's rounded because a needle is shaped like the letter D. If you looked at it from above, you might need a magnifying glass sometimes, you'll see that it has one flat side and the rest of it is round. And remember, as I mentioned in the troubleshooting guide, when you install your needle, in addition to installing it all the way up until it stops and not letting it slip down uh, while you are uh, tightening or snugging the needle clamp <coughs> set screw, you also wanna make sure that whatever your sewing machine uh, tells you in its manual in terms of how to install the needle, because they go in differently depending on the machine, be sure that the flat side of the needle is facing in the right in, in the correct direction. For some machines, it faces um, to the right. There are a few singers where it faces to the left, not at an angle, but directly to the left or the right. And then later you see, uh, and even some of the vintage models, you start to see where the flat side faces the back of uh, the machine which is one of the easier ones to see when you're trying to, to do that. But in any case, make sure you can, can do this even if you need a magnifying glass because if you don't use the flat side of that needle to install it, your machine is not gonna be happy and you will not be happy either with the results of the sewing you're trying to accomplish. Now, this is, this is, these were made in West Germany, so it tells me they're older. Even, uh, Germany uh, does not produce very many needles anymore. The Schmetz company was a German company. I think it still is. A lot of their needles are not made there. This says ballpoint. Uh, you hear the name ballpoint, you think of a ballpoint pen. And maybe for good reason, because uh, ballpoint uh, <coughs> refers to a point type that is really important when you are sewing knits. Knit fabrics have a different construction, obviously, than wovens. In a woven fabric, when you have a sharp needle piercing it, 
even if one of the, uh, either the warp or the weft thread in a woven fabric, even if it gets abraded, that's usually okay. But in a knit, if you don't use a ballpoint needle tip, you run the risk, and it's a pretty significant one, that other needles are going to cut the knit and cause it to unravel because you're gonna damage it in terms of the structure of the fabric. Let's see, I'm gonna show you, I think I have, uh, yeah, here's two. These are both old and vintage. One of these says 55 cents. Um, I don't recognize the brand, but look, you can. I like this, guys. You can even see the illustration. They even did a little drawing here to kind of show you why you want ballpoint needles with knits. Notice how it shows the way the needle goes in. And so um, look on the left. You see the left, it shows, and what it's saying there, it's a little broken there, but it says regular point. And notice it's showing how that regular point, once, once my hand and the table stop shaking, it's basically showing that the fabric is gonna be damaged. And then on the right, it says ballpoint. And notice that the ballpoint is going through the knit without damaging it. So they're actually trying to teach you while they're selling you needles here. And it says, so stretch, elastic, and knitted fabrics without pulling or tearing. Separates fabric threads. So that's really important. And those of you who sew knits, you probably already know this if you've tried to use other needle types. Uh, here's one that says a dollar, so it's a little newer. And this was, this was branded by the White Company. And uh, the White Sewing Machine Company uh, was headquartered in Cleveland, Ohio. Now, by the time these needles were sold, they were not making the machines there, but uh, it says made in Japan, packaged in the US. But again, these are uh, ballpoint needles for knits. Uh, let me see. Oh, you may see specialized needles. Now, these, were, these say Kenmore Q-Type. In the 70s, you guys have seen me talk about these in some of my uh, other videos on uh, accessories or parts. I may have talked about this, but <clears throat> Q needles were a needle that you could use, um, and I've never tried to use these in other brand machines. They might work, but I can't, I can't swear to that. But the Q was a special uh, a needle that was designed for double knit, very stretchy knit fabrics that were popular in the 70s. And again, Sears was such a big player that they could go to manufacturers and, and basically uh, tell them what they wanted and the manufacturers would deliver. Q needles were specific to uh, Sears, but again, it was a way to, uh, to, to tell people that their machines could sew knits. You don't have to have a Q needle, but, uh, and, and some of these Q needles were never used. I believe these are actually uh, unused versions. You may see them sometime. And, these are universal needles, and these are uh, older. <clears throat> they say Sears on them. They have that that sort of uh, sort of sage green from the '60s that Sears used on a lot of their uh, their home products, and it just says Sears on it. Uh, while we're on that topic, guys, you will sometimes find when you get a vintage sewing machine, vintage needles. This is an older pack. It's got the older Singer color scheme. It, the pack is made of paper with a little cellophane window. Uh, I think that's actual cellophane and not plastic, possibly. Uh, and it says made in West Germany. Singer does not have West German made needles today. This is also a ballpoint, by the way. It says ballpoint for synthetic knit fabrics. Now, these needles look like they've been well cared for. They were kept indoors. They might be fine. I think old vintage needles are kind of a cool thing to kind of Maybe keep in your sewing table with your vintage machine as a keepsake. I'm gonna make a different video on um, how to preserve and appreciate some of the items that come in very old sewing machine tables. I know that sounds like a very obscure topic, but it's something that, uh, that uh, I came to realize over the years as I've been collecting machines. I've been collecting things that, that belong to people, sometimes for generations. One other thing I wanted to say about old needles is uh, here's an old pack of Kenmore's uh, and just says sewing machine needles, but these were exposed to moisture. You do not ever want to use needles that have rust. And I know that sounds obvious, but it's important to mention. Even if your old sewing machine has some old stains on it and it looks old and it has a nice patina, uh, you don't want to use needles, even if they were high quality when they were made. If they're rusty, 
You can hold on to them as a keepsake, but I would not use them. I'm sure they were very high quality when they were made. Let's see, these were, it doesn't say where these were made. Very likely either Germany or Japan. <clears throat> and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about storage and I'm gonna save the Singer needles for last. There are different ways to store needles. Often they come in these plastic packs or they come in some form of packaging. Um, going way back, people used to keep needles in these kind of neat little uh, wooden, um, gosh, I don't know what else you would call it, kind of a little wooden cylinder uh, carved out of wood. Uh, not sure why they made them out of wood, but I think that's pretty cool. Uh, they're quiet <laughs> when you shake them. I keep some of my own needles in here just because I think it's neat. Um, and uh, this was one form of storage. And of course, later you get plastic like everything else in the world. Um, this is a plastic container. You may have things that weren't even originally meant um, to store needles. I found this little, this is a little, uh, tiny little cylinder uh, with a little, with a little uh, stopper top. And it was originally used for a, like a homeopathic uh, natural medicine thing. And it actually may be, I think it is long enough to hold some needles. But anyway, you know, find what you can. I like having needles stored for a number of reasons. I don't want them to be damaged and I don't want them to stick me uh, if they're just laying around loose. I like them stored. <clears throat> now, lastly, you see in the background, there is, it looks like a blurry background. Um, this is one of the packages that I have seen over the years with Singer needles. And they may even have come out with yet newer packaging and colors, I, I can't be sure. Um, one thing to say about Singer needles, their packaging, at least in the past, was pretty useful for a number of reasons. They actually told you what size it was. Um, they're just, just well-designed packaging, if you really want to get nerdy about it. Um, and at least these are now two and a half dollars whenever they were made. But Singer started doing something that was useful. It was color coding. Color coding the, the, top, the top end of the needle See if I can pull this up and let you see. If you look here, there's a blue band that goes across uh, at the top of the shaft, getting near the top. And they did this to help people figure out what size they had. That's a very useful thing because if you get a needle and it's not in the package, and maybe you've got several needles out there, it's awfully hard to tell sometimes what size they are. And I kind of, I really like the fact that they've used that as a, uh, you know, as a way to help you figure out what you've got in your hand. And you can see it here, this is a variety pack. It has size 11, 14, 15, no, excuse me, 16. But notice you've got orange, blue, and purple, and that's kind of cool. Uh, one of the reasons I keep Singer needles on hand, here's an older pack, 65 cents. It's got the old uh, green and red uh, color scheme. But it says here, it's got 11, 14, 16. Um, one of the reasons that I keep uh, Singer needles on hand, and I keep new ones, I go and buy them new, is because certain vintage sewing machines seem to prefer them, and, I, and I'm not entirely sure why. I, I've seen online where people have measured them and they seem different, but there's some slight variation in Singer needles. Now, to my knowledge, Singer needles will work in any brand vintage sewing machine. It's not that they won't work in other machines, but if I take some of these other brands and I try to put them in, particularly something like a Singer Featherweight, I've actually done that with Schmetz brand machine, uh, needles before, and the machine was not happy and it wouldn't sew properly. And then I went and put a Singer needle in and it sewed happily, you know, beautifully. Um, now, some of you, let me know in the comment section what you think. Some of you may not have that issue. In fact, you, you may have a vintage sewing machine that will take any brand, and most of them will. Again, it's just certain Singer machines, and for the most part, it's been, from my own experience, it has been Singer Featherweights, uh, which are magnificent machines, and they normally will take, um, uh, normally, you know, they, they take home sewing machine needles. Uh, I've had Singer Featherweights that would use any brand, and then some of them were just, they were just finicky and picky. Uh, that's, you know, really the only rationale I can think of. There's really no reason that I'm aware of. Um, but anyway, I wanted to share this with you all because, you know, a needle doesn't sound all that important. But in fact, if you're not using the right needle, uh, 
your machine's not going to be happy uh, if you don't use the right tip. The material you're sewing, uh, your project is going to have challenges it didn't need to have. <clears throat> you definitely want to change your needle. Now, how often you change it depends on how much sewing you're doing, how many projects, how long is the project. Are you sewing, um, are you sewing uh, a few napkins or are you sewing drapery for a whole house? Uh, you definitely want to, to change your needles because as they get dull, they don't sew as well and they are more uh, vulnerable to breaking on you and that can certainly happen. And so again, when you're looking at this and you're thinking about needles, uh, you don't always have access in the stores to the brand you want. Again, the Oregon brand is my favorite. I find that all of these brands are fine, obviously, because I use Schmetz, I use Singer needles. Uh, if I have a preference, if I can have my, my choice, I love Oregon brand and I really love those titanium coated needles. If you want to find these, you have to actually go online. Uh, I go on to eBay, places like Sharp Sewing, but there, there are many other places to find these. Uh, and like I said, I would keep a variety of needle sizes on hand because one of the things you will notice when you look at your sewing machine manual, and I really recommend you do this, if you ever have a project where you are trying to figure out what size needle to use, the first obvious place to check is your sewing machine manual. Now this is a Singer 301 manual. It came with a, a Singer 301 I recently uh, rescued and am going to be restoring. Um, but whether you have an old manual or a new one, uh, there is a place in the manual, there should be, this one is called needle, uh, needle and Threads to Use, or Needle Types. And this is a very useful thing to have. Now those of you who are experienced sewers, many of you may have an instinct for what needle size to use. Let's say we're dealing with wovens here, so we're gonna use a universal needle type. You still have to decide what size needle am I gonna use? Well, you have quite a few choices, but you have guides. So at the top here, it says, uh, fill me materials comparable to net, marquisette, uh, organdi and ninon. Um, you would use, uh, looks like size nine. That's gotta be very delicate fabrics and I don't recognize most of them. Um, once you get into say um, sheer fabrics, uh, what is this saying, um, rayon, crepes, then you would use a size 11. These are still pretty small. And then you get into your lightweight materials, gingham, um, uh, taffetas, you've got size 14. 14 is great for medium and lightweight wovens. You'll go up to 16 with things like corduroy, um, velvet, velveteen. Uh, to use a size 16 needle, you can see uh, uh, using that also for things like, you know, canvas, even denim. Now, 18 is, uh, a lot of people will use a size 18 for denim. It just depends on the weight, right? Or do you have a heavy denim, a light denim? Uh, again, many of you will have uh, experience in sewing and you already have kind of a pretty good running uh, instinct for what size needle to use. But you need to remember to change it because if you don't, uh, again, this is something I should have included in the troubleshooting video because you don't change your needle size and your thread, then you're going to have issues when you change projects. Now notice it also talks about thread size. Uh, on the next column over right here, after you know your kind of fabric and you got your needle size to the right, what weight uh, uh, do you have? Are you using silk thread, which is often very fine? Are you using silk cotton? Uh, today, a lot of us have uh, polyester wrapped in cotton um, and we still have pure cotton threads. Uh, I don't see polyester on here. This would have been printed around 1950, 51. So polyester was still just being thought about. But my point is, make sure that your thread is sized in proportion to your needle, the eye of your needle. If your thread is too thin and your needle's too large, if you use a very thin thread with a size 18 needle, you can have problems. If you use a very thick thread with a size 11 needle, 
if you can get it threaded, um, it can create issues with tension. And as you will remember from my troubleshooting video, uh, I think it was the first one I did, uh, number one, talks about thread tension. And you all know how important that is. And when your machine's thread tension is not happy, uh, you are not gonna be happy either. So again, this is something I wanted to mention because the picking the size of the needle is really crucial. I would say for many of you, you probably range anywhere from a size 14 to 16 and 18. Uh, some of the old vintage singers, um, like I say, they will use a size, they'll say size 21 needle. I think today manufacturers, uh, they actually produce a size 20. Again, that's very unusual. But anyway, folks, I thought uh, I would share this with you. This was supposed to be one of my shorter videos, but I wanted just to mention to you some of the basics about needles. Um, replace them on a regular basis. You have to use your own judgment. Uh, depending on how much sewing you've done on that needle. Maybe keep a little diary uh, when you change it out so you remember. It's kind of hard to remember when you last changed it. When in doubt, just change it. Needles are not expensive. Uh, even the, the best quality, which I believe are these organ brand, they're not expensive at all and they last quite a while. So anyway, guys, this is another piece of the puzzle to um, uh, getting your vintage sewing machine set up to sew properly. Uh, making that machine happy so that you'll be happy with it. And of course, a lot of these things I've just shared with you, they even apply to the newer machines. And it's kind of funny, unless your new machine says you must have a specific needle <clears throat> that you don't see that uh, covered here in this video, uh, it's pretty amazing that the same needle specification has been around since the 19, early 1900s um, and we're still using it, which is kind of nice. But Anyway, uh, look forward to any comments or suggestions you might have, and thank you for watching.